Good morning, dear Gloria. I greet you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And it's wonderful to bring the good news to you this morning. And my prayer this morning is hope you are well in this time that we are going through. The theme for this morning is your potential. In the world of today, the people are looking for the potential in you. For what reason? Are you a good person? Hard worker? Do you know your job? Can they rely on you? And this is what the world is looking at you. And this is what they want out of you. But this morning, we're going to look at the potential, the way that Jesus is looking at you and me. I'm going to start off with this morning in Hebrews 9 verse 15. What happened here is, during the week I heard somebody was preaching Hebrews 9 and at verse 15 there was a word that catched my eye and I know it's the Holy Spirit but we would like to take note of this word. I'm going to read it to you, Hebrews 9 verse 15. And for this reason he is the mediator of the new covenant by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions under the first covenant that those who are called may receive the promise of the internal inheritance. That word called, I look into the Bible and I made a study out of it. And I come to the conclusion what I've read and I've seen it, and I'm going to bring you this good news, is that the Lord Jesus called you by your name. And I would like to read to you in Isaiah 45, verse 3 and verse 4. Verse 3 says, I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places, that you may know that I, the Lord, who called you by your name, am the God, of Israel. Verse 4. For Jacob, my servant's Jake, sake, and Israel, my elect, I have even called you by your name. I have named you, though you have not known me. Did you hear that? Just think of the past when you met Jesus. And this verse will come to life in your heart that he called you by your name. And I would like to read Isaiah 42 verse 6. I the Lord have called you in righteousness and will hold your hand. I will keep it. You and give you as, as a covenant to the people as a light to the Gentiles. Just give me a few minutes here to to give a testimony on this verse where it says, and will hold your hand and I will keep you. After an encounter with the Lord, as I met him many years ago, I was looking for something which I, which I didn't know what it was. Although it was the Holy Spirit afterwards, which I discovered that. And after I met the Lord Jesus and I was filled with the Holy Spirit, Something happened that morning. I was on, the, on my way to the living room. And as I approached it, I saw a huge, huge hand stretch out to me. And he took my right hand. And I heard this voice. I, the Lord, will never leave you. God is so faithful to me. That he promised me that I will never leave you because I've got your help by your right hand. And that was an amazing interaction with the Lord Jesus and with the Holy Spirit when I received it. It was so comfortable for me to know I will never be alone. He will never leave me. Do you hear this? The Lord said to you this morning, He will never leave you. Whatever your circumstances is, he will never, never let you go. And this morning we're also going to look at God is calling us for a certain purpose. There are two of we're going to discuss this morning. 
The one is the fellowship with the Lord Jesus. And the second one is the potential in you to spread the good news. Wherever you go, you can spread the good news. When God is calling you, He you knows your potential. He made you. He's your maker. Realize that this morning there are a purpose for you in life. In respect of what's going on in this world. And we're going to look at two characters this morning, actually three of them, which is very, very important for us to take note. The way Jesus handled this situation. The first one is that Zacharias, Zacharias, hopefully I pronounce it correctly. He was a chief tax collector and a very rich man. If you can remember, the Jews hate the tax collectors because they're taking their money. It's like our tax people today. Woo, they are very hard on us to take our tax. And I'm going to read to you in Luke 19 from verse 3. Luke 19 verse 3. And he saw to see Jesus was but could not because of the crowd, for he was of short stature. Verse 4. So he ran ahead and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was going to pass that way. Verse 5. And then when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said to him, Zagayas, make haste, come down today. I must stay at your house. Verse 6 says, So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Did you hear this? Jesus called him by his name to stay with him. He was so joyful. The word says, He received him joyfully. Verse 8. Then Zacharias stood up. And said to him, Lord, look, Lord, I gave half of my goods to the poor. And if I have taken anything from anyone by false accusations, I restore fourfold. You know what? In the presence of Jesus, you can't stay the same. You will never be the same. The moment you met Jesus, the moment he filled you with his Holy Spirit, you can't be the same. And this is what's for me very interesting here this morning about Zacharias is that he repented immediately in the presence of Jesus. Did you hear that? He called him by his name. The second one we're going to look at is Levi or Matthew. He was also a tax collector. It seems to me Jesus had a, 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 a soft spot for the tax collectors because he know the Jews hate them. Now listen to this one. It's very, very interesting about Levi, the tax collector. I'm going to read to you a verse, uh, chapter 5, Luke 5, chapter 29, verse 27, sorry. Luke 5, verse 27. After these things, he went out and saw a tax collector named Levi, sitting at the tax office, and he said to him, follow me. So he left all, rose up and followed him. Then Levi gave him a great feast in his own house. And there were a great number of tax collectors and others who sit down with him. He was so happy. Listen to the word in verse 29. A great feast in his own house. There was joy in his heart. Because you know in the presence of Jesus, there's joy. And he filled you with his love. That love. I don't think Levi understand that. But when he met Jesus, gratefully, he knows what was going on. He had to repent. He had to make a good feast for him and Jesus. The third one we're going to look at is Luke 5, verse 4 to 8. 
When he stopped speaking, he said to Simon, Launch out into the deep and let down your nets for a catch. But Simon answered and said to him, Master, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. Nevertheless, at your word, I will let the net down. Listen to what he said. Simon Peter said, Lord, on your word. And that word is the word Rema. And if you look at that, what the meaning is, that it is to have fellowship with Jesus. And when he had done that, they caught a great number of fish, and the net was breaking. So they signaled to their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and folded both their boats, so they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw it, he fell down at Jesus' knees and saying, Depart from me, I am a sinful man. Peter immediately realized this is Jesus. And this is quite interesting that if you look at the character of Peter, I love Peter, he's an awesome person, that Jesus would like to show me he is the Son of God and the power that's invested in him by God. And Peter had to see that and realize that this is Jesus. And listen to what he said to him. Verse 9. For he and all that were with him were astonished at the catch of fish which they had taken. Verse 10. So also were James and John, the sons of Zebedee, who were partners with Simon. And Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on you will catch men. So when they had brought their boats to land, they forsake all and follow him. Jesus know the potential of Peter to work for him. To spread the good news of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The crucifixion. Everything that behind what happened in the past, Peter was able to do that. If you look at Act, and you follow Peter and Act, awesome. Because Jesus know the potential in Peter. Did you take note that Jesus understand our characters? And he won't take you behind your character. And this is very important for us to realize it. To fellowship with Jesus and to be an instrument, a live instrument in his hands. Dear friend, I'm asking you the question this morning. How's your fellowship with Jesus? Do you still spend time with him? Do you make time with him? Because Jesus loved to have fellowship with us. In the morning, with my quiet time, some very early for some people, I'm a very early bird, to have a nice cup of coffee and chat with my Lord. I'm not praying to him anymore. I chat with him. To so sit at his feet and listen to his word. What is in store for me today? I'm asking you that question again, my friend. Also, to fellowship with him, but to realize your potential that you've got, your character. Jesus respect that. He may want to use you in today. The world needs Jesus, and you will be that instrument who we call by your name. Are you born again? Are you filled with the Holy Spirit? It's very important in our days. We can't function without the Holy Spirit. 
The Holy Spirit will lead us. He will teach us. He will take us into secret places in the Word. What He did with me, when I listened to the, to the Word, I called for those who are called. And the message this morning is, you are called by your name. And if you are not born again, if you are not filled with the Holy Spirit, we will make contact with you and help you to be filled with the Holy Spirit. We've got new technology. We can use cell phones to pray for you. In the name of Jesus, let us pray. Lord Jesus, thank you for your word this morning. Thank you that each and everyone that's listening to this word are important to you. You love us. You care for us. You want to give us your best. And you've already done that, Lord. When you died on the cross for our sins and our transgressions. And I pray for our listeners here this morning, Lord. For those who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, for those who are not born again, that they will meet you. That they will open their ears when you call them by their name. That they will answer. In Jesus' wonderful name we pray this. Amen. Have a nice day.